Well, hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I made this mid-century inspired table base and reconditioned this pre-existing top my client already owned to make one piece that was definitely meant for each other. So stay tuned and check it out. So this one started a little different than normal. The client already had this table top. Uh, it actually had developed a crack as the wood had dried, so they were sent a replacement one. Um, but we decided we wanted to try and go ahead and make a base for it and repurpose it as more of a mid-century style. So I just needed to go ahead and scrape all of the finish off with a card scraper. And then I came in with 80 grit sandpaper and finish it off. And actually underneath all of it, it was a mix of red and white oak, um, but overall in good shape, definitely something we can work with. All right, so now that we know what the top looks like, let's go ahead and start figuring this base out. So the customer and I had to kind of decide on this four-legged mid-century modern look. So after playing around with some dimensions and some tapers and angles and everything and different heights, finally landed down this design that I like. 24 inch wide at the base, 20 inches wide at your top, 28 overall height. Like I said, this will be four legs, so obviously it'll be a T intersection there. It's gonna be eight quarter red oak to match the red oak top. So now that we know all the sizes and everything is drawn to scale, I'm gonna go ahead and draw it out on plywood. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut our template out so we can make these four legs. So let's get to it. Since we took the time to go ahead and get everything drawn out to scale on the graph paper, laying out our template for the table legs uh, was pretty straightforward. It was literally just scaling everything to full size and then using my track saw and the band saw to get everything cut out, just following along those lines. Um, this left really good clean results with pretty minimal cleanup. So cut the bulk away with the track saw, got the rest of it off with the band saw, and then I came and used the oscillating spindle sander to go ahead and touch up those corners and just really smooth everything out. You really want to take your time with your template. Any imperfections in your template will directly translate to the piece when it's time to go ahead and route it out. So like I said, just adding the little radiuses, any rough or chatter, every rough edges is going to get smoothed out. Now that our template was all cleaned up and ready to go, I just took a Sharpie and brought it over to my material and started marking out all of my pieces, just tracing everything out numbering them all to make sure I have the right amount of pieces and then bringing them over to the bandsaw to go ahead and cut the bulk off. Now I've done template routing in a bunch of my other videos. So if you haven't seen those, definitely go watch them after this. Um, but the gist of it is you go ahead and trace your template out and then you want to get as close to your line without going over. The Sharpie helps because it gives you a, about an eighth inch or so, a little bit less uh, buffer space. So as long as you're on the outside of that Sharpie line, you're good. Once everything was roughed out, I chucked up a templating bit in my palm router and just started going around all my pieces. And this was taking a lot of time and it ended up giving me a lot of different tear out. Not so much with the templating bit, but when I got over to the router table and was using the spiral flush trim bit, um, it was just wanted to grab those end grain fibers of the red oak. It was causing a lot of tear out. Uh, so I had to remake a few pieces. It was pretty frustrating because even though this is red oak, it's still not a cheap material, and the last thing I want to do is waste my effort and time, and especially all this wood. <clears throat> all right, so got some more tear out, kick back on the router. Literally on the last corner of this leg, it was freaking perfect until then. Um, between that and my light, it kept cutting off and out. Wants to stay on. About done for tonight, so. I think I'm gonna revisit the drawing board. I'm liking how this is coming together. I don't like that it's so many pieces. So I'm gonna rework the design, make a new template. I would like for this, I'd like for all this to be one piece. And then if needed, I can have a core, you know, block that I can attach everything to. But having eight pieces just doesn't really make a lot of sense the more I think about it. And I'd like to have a little more continuous grain flow, which this achieves none of that. And it's also creating a lot more parts and a lot more chance for me to screw it up. So on that, I'm calling it a night. I'm gonna sleep on it, figure out exactly how I wanna do this with the remaining oak and I'll probably have to get a little bit more, unfortunately. But that's the way she goes sometimes. So yeah, with that, done. All right, so back from the lumber yard, got this nice super wide 14 and a half inch wide board. I'm gonna go ahead and rough these out. I went ahead and remade my templates and now it's just a one piece versus a two piece. So it'll look a lot better aesthetically, a lot stronger. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and rough all this out, get it all milled. So let's make some dust. With our new template and our new piece of lumber, we decided to go ahead and start marking everything out. Just trying to avoid any cracks or any knots, any undesirable stuff that will end up weakening the legs or is just not aesthetically pleasing. So once I had that out, I had to go rough everything out with the jigsaw. For some reason, this piece gave me a lot more difficulty than the last piece. I used the Dewalt and then I switched to the Fest tool. Those weren't really getting anywhere. And then I put an even more aggressive blade in the Dewalt, took my time, and that ended up working. This clip was sped up crazy fast, so this actually took quite a while, but I'm not gonna show you guys all of that because this is YouTube. And then once I got everything done, I went over the bandsaw and cleaned it up closer to my lines for the router table. I also went and picked up a two inch flush cut bit from, uh, I think it was from Bits and Bits. Now, I definitely worked a whole lot better just really what I needed. The other bit was way too undersized, but it was just what I had on hand. Now we're gonna make a table saw sled to clean up all of our joint faces to give us way better glue joints. So basically you'll take a piece of plywood, you'll run it along your fence, taking just a little bit off, and then you do not touch your fence again. And then we're gonna use it to establish a clean edge so we know exactly where it's gonna cut. And then we use reference blocks or like stops on the sled I like to set mine where it pretty much locks it in the exact same spot every time, so it's the only way it can go in. This is going to minimize any error. You can also use toggle clamps, hold down clamps, you can draw reference lines, uh, but this is just how I do it. And then using a cross cut blade and just taking my time, going ahead and running everything through. Like I said, this is going to leave a super clean cut. I think it took a, just over an eighth of an inch off of all of these. If you enjoy this content and you're not wanting to wait for me to drop my next video, you can also go ahead and follow me on Instagram at JRUT Studios. I'm also on Facebook, but if you're not subscribed yet and you're following me on those, we definitely need to fix that as well. So go ahead and subscribe to this video, um, especially if you've got anything out of it. Now, to hook these together, we're going to keep it simple. I'm just using the domino. This is going to make gluing it up a whole lot easier. Now, since this is a long grain to long grain joint, Domino is not really adding any extra strength, but again, when it comes time to alignment, it's going to make life so much easier. So all you need is some sort of alignment tool. You can do biscuits, you can do dominoes, you can do dowels. So just plunging from there, getting those cut out. And then before I go ahead and glue these legs together, I wanted to start kind of honing them. There was still a little rough marks and a little chatter and some small tear out from the router. So just using a card scraper and my sander, just going ahead and smoothing everything over. It's a whole lot easier to deal with these pieces now before they're all glued up and then you can't get your sander in there. You're having to work at awkward angles. You can't really clamp it down to any work surface. So something to keep in mind as you're, if you decide to go ahead and make something like this. Those cleaned up to go ahead and do the first glue up of this series. So this is just again, type on two is a good go-to. And then I'm gonna use a little F-style clamp just to get everything where it's nice and same height, nice and level. And then you don't need anything crazy for this. I'm just looking to close that glue gap, get a nice tight seam, wipe off the excess. That's all you need for this. Like I said, this is a super strong joint. And then to attach the other two legs, again, I'm just gonna use dominoes and I'm gonna use the base plate as a reference. Um, basically, this to be able to get these to fold right on top of each other. Again, there's plenty of ways to do this, but that dominoes out, it's super fast. You gotta love this machine. It's definitely one of my favorites. Now, if you're watching this and there's a part you don't fully understand or I'm going too fast, leave me a comment down below. I mean, I, I do respond to every single comment that I get. Um, so if you ask me a question there. Uh, someone else in the comments may even be able to answer your question. Um, but also, if I get enough feedback on it, I'll make a video on each individual thing or I can make just small little shorts showing stuff more in depth. Like I said, there's so many parts to cover when you're building a piece of furniture that it's hard to fit it all into a timely video that people will actually watch. I mean, I can make this an hour long and show every single step, but again, I probably only have a handful of views. So let me know what you guys are thinking or what you're struggling with or something you just need a little bit of clarification. I'd definitely make it a point to answer all that. And then with the legs glued up, I just repurposed the table saw sled that we did earlier. And this is gonna be to attach the top uh, mounting points for the tabletop. Like I said, if you don't know if you noticed that from the original design, I had those little extensions coming off where I'm gonna be able to attach bolts to the threaded inserts. With the new design, I didn't have that, so I'm gonna be adding these now. Now, I first thought about keeping the grain direction the same, but having a mounting point with straight through end grain just isn't a very strong way to do it. So I decided to go 
yeah, just face grain with this, the same thickness as the material from an offcut of the piece. And I'll kind of show you what I mean here. So we're gonna have these pieces that extend over the edge and then we're gonna be able to drill a hole through the center and that's gonna go into a threaded insert. Now to attach these, you're definitely gonna want some sort of alignment tool, whether it's a domino, a dowel, or if you even recess a screw and send it through the top side. Since the tabletop is gonna sit on top of this, you're never gonna see it unless you take that table apart. Um, but with all these angles, you need some good way to attach them. So just real quick, recessing those dominoes out. And then I'm gonna clamp a two by four to the bottom to give me a straight reference edge so I can get a clamp on there directly over it and give me good square clamping pressure. Um, so this was just the best way I thought of it. It was super easy. I had the two by four land right there. Definitely recommend it. Now don't go crazy clamping this thing all the way to, to high heavens to go ahead and get it seated. Again, you don't wanna overstress these when you're, you're dealing with a bunch of different angles. These legs aren't fragile, but there's no reason to crank it down with all the force you have. You're just trying to get that glue joint to clean up. And if you took the time to use that table saw sled to clean that, that joint face up, you should have no problem getting it flush. To match the angles and keep this one flowy piece, just using my straight edge, like my ruler, and holding it along the edge of that angle and then marking it there. Once I had it marked out, I was able to just take a pole saw and lop off that end. Now I'm not going all the way to the edge there. I'll come back and smooth it out with a sander and a little block plane just to get it flush. You don't want to go too close and potentially scar the rest of the piece and that's just a lot more to clean up. But once I had that done, it was time to go ahead and start getting everything sanded while it was still easy to get in all the nooks and crannies. Said So just going through the grit progression, 80, 120, 150, 180, and then 220. Like I said earlier, we're gonna use threaded inserts and machine bolts to attach this base to the tabletop. So while everything's nice and square, I went ahead and marked the center, used an owl to punch so that my drill bit had a place to start. And then I countersunk for the screw head and then drilled all the way through. Now, if I'm gonna do this again, I would mark before while the edges are square, but I would not come back and drill that hole until after I was done with my round over. I put a half inch round over on the outside of all these legs uh, just really helped tie that look together for that mid-century modern look. Now, since I drilled all the holes beforehand, I ended up having to use a half-inch dowel to plug the hole so that way the bearing from the router bit wouldn't go in there and just totally mess the cut up. So just something to keep in mind. Order of operations is definitely something you need to keep in thought of at all times when woodworking because um, something simple like this was a total oversight. Ended up not being an issue. I had a half inch dowel on hand, but it would have been a pain if I had to run to the store or make a half inch dowel to plug the hole so I wouldn't mess everything up. So little stuff like that. Like I said, hopefully if you go for it, you remember this tip if you get anything out of this video at all. And just to prove to you guys that I did it, I went ahead and sanded both the top and the legs through the progression of the grits. I also went and cleaned up all those roundovers by hand on the base and the tabletop. For the top, I just added an eighth inch round over to the top side and the bottom side, just to smooth that edge. Wasn't looking to have any crazy profile there. Yeah, you know, just wanted to clean up any little imperfections on that top, any marring, especially since it had to travel pretty far to get all the way to my shop. Um, and then with that all out of the way, it was time to go ahead and glue those last two legs on. So just like before, some type on two dominoes, and then I'm using very light clamping pressure for these. Like I said, I'm cleaning up squeeze out, using F clamps to keep everything on the same plane, make sure everything is flush and level because the last thing we want is to do all this work to have a teeter-totter of a table base. And then I'm using a bunch of different clamps here, some squeeze clamps, some parallel clamps, but nothing is on there tight. I'm just trying to get that glue joint to close. I don't want to mar the surface because then I'm gonna have to come back and sand more. And I don't want to do that. Now to mark for the threaded inserts, I, once I have my table top uh, laid out and then I had the base lined up where I wanted it to be, I used that same drill bit that I drilled those holes out and a mallet just to tap and leave that indention with the brad point bit. And then to make it a little bit easier when I go to drill these out, I use an owl just to make sure I had a really good starting point for that drill bit. And then as you see, I use blue tape measured to the depth of my threaded inserts so that way I'm not drilling to the tabletop. We've come too far to go ahead and make a silly mistake like that. So be careful, take your time drilling those threaded inserts. It'd be super upsetting to do all this work and then drill through the top and I have to start over or figure out a creative way to plug them, stuff like that. And I just don't want to deal with that. But see, once you have it all through, like so these are just some Phillips head ones. So you don't need any special kind of Allen wrench. It makes it a whole lot easier for the client. And then as you can see, 
it just tightens on super sturdy and it can be taken apart and reassembled time and time again now for the finish for this one i'm using rubio monocoats antique bronze now i wasn't sure how i was going to feel about it i ordered it a couple of different finishes but i absolutely loved the way this brought this oak to life i mean it really completed the look we were going for here uh, it gave this nice golden like, antique look um, really completed that mid-century modern vibe so just smeared it all on or scrubbed it in with a white scotch bright pad let it sit and buffed it off i mean can't get any simpler than that this stuff cures super nice allows you to feel that wood grain through and who doesn't love all that <laughs> 